Hello and welcome. In this video, I will be explaining to you the poem The Nightingale and the Glow One by William Cooper. This video was mainly made for the 8 standard students of Nazareth School of Literature. This poem originally consists of 38 lines divided into 4 stanzas. However, our textbook has only 26 lines. But I will still be explaining the remaining 12 lines just so you know the gist of the entire poem. Also, please rewind or slow down the speed of the video if you think I'm going too fast. I'm Anthony and let's get on with this video. This video is divided into different sections and here are the timestamps for the various sections. You can also find the timestamps down in the description. Use them if you want to go and watch a specific section. In the Get Set section of the book, a short reflection is given. It reminds us that God created everything, whether it's the universe, the earth which is part of the universe, humans, animals, everything is the creation of God, and each of it is beautiful in its own ways. The book leaves us with a reflective question. Is it right for any creature to harm any other creature of God? Think about it. Alright, here is the story of the nightingale and the glowworm. There was once a nightingale who flew to a village one day, and like any other nightingale, he was also an amazing singer. And so, he started singing, and the villagers loved his song very much. The nightingale was also enjoying so much that he was not willing to stop. The whole day had passed and it was evening, but he was still going on singing. Evening went by and the night had come, but still the nightingale was not willing to stop. However, he started feeling hungry and the hunger was so great that he finally had to stop and go look for food. When he went around looking for food, his eyes fell on something shining in the dark and immediately knew that it was a glow worm and so he decided to eat him for supper. He flew down towards the glowworm. However, the glowworm had already noticed that Nightingale was about to attack him. And so, within a split second, he decided what to do. Just before the Nightingale reached him, he shouted confidently, Did you admire my lamp? As much as I admired your singing, these bold and confident words of the glowworm caught the Nightingale off guard. The nightingale was shocked. He could only say, I, uh... But even before he could continue, the glowworm said to him, You will make a big mistake if you do anything that would stop me from shining, just as I would if I disturbed your singing. And, uh, why is that? Asked the confused nightingale, and the glowworm replies, because the same God who gave you this melodious voice is the same God who gave me the ability to shine so that with your music and with my light, he can beautify and cheer the world. With these words, the glowworm successfully convinced the hungry nightingale. The nightingale said, Hmm, that actually makes sense. All right then, I shall go look for food somewhere else. And he flew off. And that was how the wise glowworm saved himself, while also teaching us a moral lesson that we ought to love and not hurt each other. Moving on to the detailed explanation of the text. Let us first take a look at the setting of the poem. If you don't know what a setting is, in a poem or a story, setting means the time and place where the story is taking place. It also means the social status, weather, historical period, and detail about the immediate surroundings but we'll throw this aside and focus only on the time and place. Reading the poem, we know that the scene opens with a nightingale singing in the village, most probably a village in England. And I say England, not just because the poet is from England, but also because in the poem there is a mention of hawthorn, which is a tree or a shrub, and hawthorn trees abundantly grow in England, especially the common hawthorn. Before we begin reading, let us go through some few things here. Let us begin with personification. You know that the pronouns he and she are used for humans and the pronoun it is used for animals. But did you notice this, that in this poem, 
Both the nightingale and the glowworm are indicated by the pronoun his instead of it. In English, we allow that to happen because of the power of personification. Personification is a poetic device used to give human qualities to something not human. I know, some of you are wondering what is a poetic device. Let me use a simple analogy to explain this. This is called a rake. We know that a rake is one of the most important tools for farming. So, just as a rake is a tool for a farmer, a poetic device is a tool for a poet. It helps a poet to make his poems more beautiful. In this poem, the poet has used personification to allow the nightingale and the glowworm to have human abilities, such as speaking and reasoning. And therefore, we can use the pronoun he to refer to both the nightingale and the glowworm. Speaking of giving human abilities to animals, there is a name given to those stories in which the animals are given human abilities and teaches us moral values. We call those types of stories a fable. This poem is also a fable. Another example of a fable is the popular story of the lion and the mouse. Let's talk about a nightingale. Most of us are aware that a nightingale is a bird commonly used by poets and writers because it has a beautiful voice. But most of us have never seen or heard a nightingale before. So before we continue, I want you to take a look at this. So now you know just how beautiful the voice of a nightingale truly is. All right. Let's read these two lines and understand what it means. A nightingale that all day long had cheered the village with this song. So it just means that there was once a nightingale who cheered the people of a village throughout the day with his song. Nor yet at eve his note suspended, nor yet when eventide was ended. Here note means a single musical note such as do, re, mi and so on. Eve and eventide both refers to evening. They were popularly used during the 12th century, but today we prefer the word evening. Before I continue, here is a chart that I wanted to show you. Most of you know the time when morning starts and ends, and when afternoon begins. However, many of us do not know when evening starts. If you look over here, you will know that evening starts at 5 p.m. or even 6 p.m. for some. So, until 5 in the evening, you have to use good afternoon to wish somebody. You also see that evening goes on till 10 p.m. So, you can wish someone good evening from 5 p.m. until 10 p.m. After 10 p.m. is when the night begins. Suspended means to stop something temporarily or to rest. So, these two lines mean even when evening came, which is about 5 p.m., he did not want to stop. And even after the evening ended, which is after 10 p.m., he did not stop. He began to feel as well he might the keen desire of appetite. Appetite means the desire to eat, usually driven by hunger. These lines mean, but since he began to feel the urge to eat, he thought he should finally just go and find food. Here, you see this punctuation mark, which is called semicolon. Let us see what it is and briefly explain when we can use it. A semicolon is used to connect two independent clauses. In simple terms, you can understand it as it is used to link or join one sentence to the next. Let us take this sentence for example. Dad is going bald, his hair is getting thinner and thinner. Here we have two sentences, dad is going bald and his hair is getting thinner and thinner. Here the semicolon is telling us that the next line is going to tell us why dad is going bald. So going back to the poem, these lines tells us that the nightingale is hungry and the poet uses the semicolon to tell us that the next line or lines will talk to us about the solution which the nightingale has found to satisfy his hunger. Here we are introduced to the second character of this poem, the glowworm. 
you should know that glowworm is a common name for various groups of insect that glow. Some of the glowworms are Alateri Day, commonly found in Jamaica, Arachnocampa luminous, which is commonly found in New Zealand, and Lampyris noctiluca, found across Europe and Asia. There are many other species of glowworm. I think that the poet must have drawn inspiration from this species of glowworm, the Arachnocampa luminous, because it is the most common glowworm found in England. Alright, let us read these lines. When looking eagerly around, he spied far off upon the ground, and knew the glowworm by his spark. Spied simply means looking for. So these lines mean, as he was looking around, he noticed a spark far away. He knew at once that it was a glowworm. So stooping down from Hawthorne top, he thought to put him in his crop. Stooping. This is called stooping where there is a downward bend both at the knee and the neck. Hawthorn. As I have mentioned earlier, Hawthorn is a tree or a shrub and crop is the lower portion of a bird's throat to store food. Here's a picture to show the location of a crop in a bird's body. The meaning. So, as he bent and looked down at the glowworm from the Hawthorn tree, he decided that he would eat him for supper. The worm, aware of his intent, harangued him thus, right eloquent. Intent means intention or purpose. Harangued means speaking in a loud and aggressive voice. And uh, eloquent means expressing opinion well. Let's go to the meaning. The worm was aware that the nightingale was watching him and that he wanted to eat him. So, before the nightingale could attack him, he shouted out to him, confidently, the following words. Let us talk about another punctuation mark, similar to a semicolon. The colon. You can use a colon when the next line is a quotation, an example, or a list. Here, the poet uses a colon because the next line is a quotation or a quote. And here is that quotation. Did you admire my lamp? Quote he as much as I, your minstrel see. You would abhor to do me wrong, as much as I, to spoil your song. Quote means said. Minstrelsy means singing. Abhor means hate. So these lines mean, he asked him, did you admire my lamb, just as I admired your singing? And he continued saying, it would be wrong for you to eat me, just as it would be wrong if I disturb you when you sing. We have another semicolon here. So, like I explained to you earlier, the next line is going to explain why the glowworm thinks it is wrong for the nightingale to eat him and for him to disturb the nightingale. For twas the self-same power divine taught you to sing and me to shine, that you with music, I with light, might beautify and cheer the night. Twas means it was. Power divine refers to God. However, there are also people who doesn't believe in the existence of God, but believe that some sort of power exists in this world that created us and looks over us. And they call it power divine. But here, I will refer to it as God. Meaning, for it was the same God who taught you to sing and me to shine. And he gave us these gifts so that with your music and with my light, we both may beautify and cheer the night. The songster heard his short oration and wobbling out his approbation, released him as my story tells and found supper somewhere else. Oration means speech, wobbling means singing, approbation means approval or agreement. And here is what it means. The nightingale heard his short speech and told him that he agrees with him. And so, according to this story of his, here, his means poet. He released him and went to find his supper from another place. I mentioned in the beginning that 12 lines are not found in our book. So just to satisfy your curiosity, I will explain the rest of the story briefly. Let me quickly read this out and explain it in brief. 
Hence, jarring sectaries may learn their real interest to discern that brother should not war with brother and worry and devour each other, but sing and shine by sweet consent till life's poor transient night is spent, respecting in each other's case the gifts of nature and of grace. Those Christians best deserve the name who studiously make peace their aim. Peace, both the duty and the price of him that creeps and him that flies. These two stanzas tells us that we shouldn't be fighting against each other. Life is short and we should learn to live in peace. Peace should both be our duty as well as our price. Finally, about the poet. William Cooper, born in the year 1731 and died in 1800. He was born in a place called Hertfordshire, which is in England. He was a very famous poet from the 18th century. He wrote about the everyday life of the English countryside. Countryside means rural areas like the villages and small towns. He wrote many hymns on Christianity and some anti-slavery poems. He also translated two long Greek poems named Iliad and Odyssey, which were written by a Greek author named Homer. So that's the end of the video. I am really hopeful that this video was informative. Like I said, rewind or slow down the video if you think I'm going too fast. Take care and God bless you all.